Hi guys, Yasas Kekalos Sirtate to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today we're making one of the most popular recipes on the food blog and on the channel, chicken shawarma, which I've already made before, but I'm going to be making it in the air fryer because it just tastes so good. There's so much less of a cleanup. My original recipe requires this uh, cooking in the oven, like under the broiler, and then cleaning up the pan is kind of a hassle. I don't know. I've also cooked it on the grill but I am not one made for the grill. I hate barbecuing, so I avoid it any chance I can get. I made it the other day in the air fryer and posted it on my Instagram and everybody wanted to know how I make it. It's pretty much the same way, except it cooks in here and it gets nice and crispy on the outside, juicy on the inside. It's delicious, makes for great leftovers. Everyone loves it. Let's get started. I'm starting off with some boneless chicken thigh meat and I forgot to press play and I already uh, added the olive oil and the lemon juice. Don't even ask. Anyway, boneless chicken thigh meat is my favorite meat to use because it stays juicy. You really can't overcook it. So if you're using chicken breast, you're really going to want to pay attention to the cooking time and um, don't overcook it because then it's going to get dry. But that does not happen with chicken thighs, you guys. That's why I love them. They're also less, um, less expensive than chicken breast. So it's a win-win. So I already added a half a cup of fresh lemon juice to this and about three or four tablespoons of olive oil. This is five pounds, around five pounds of uh, thigh meat. Um, the recipe calls for two pounds or two and a half pounds, but I always like to double it and make more because I like to have leftovers in the fridge for us to have lunch or take to work and stuff like that. That's that. Now we're going to season with salt. For five pounds, I would do about four teaspoons of salt, but season it to your liking. And if you're wondering which olive oil I use, it's this one right here. It, if you want some, this comes straight from Kriti. It's in our shop on the website. I also like to put a little bit of ground turmeric, about a half teaspoon. Lots of paprika, since we're doubling it, it's four teaspoons. Gives it a nice color. And this is not smoked paprika, by the way. It's just plain paprika. Some ground coriander. I like to put two heaping teaspoons. Ground cumin. I'm going to put two teaspoons of that as well. Crushed red pepper flakes, because we love them. If you don't like them, just leave them out. Now this is sumac. Sumac is really tangy and nice. It really accentuates the lemon flavor. And you could find it in Middle Eastern or Mediterranean stores two teaspoons of that. If there's something in here that you don't like, feel free to leave it out and substitute it for something else or just leave it out altogether. Some freshly cracked black pepper. Now the other two ingredients that I usually add is a little pinch of ground cardamom and some ground cinnamon. I'm going to leave it out today, but you can go ahead and add that. You can follow the original recipe and just add that. And then I have some grated garlic cloves. Lots of them. The recipe calls for five for two pounds. Of course, I doubled it. I put probably about 12. <laughs> more garlic equals more flavor in my world. Now you can thinly slice an onion too and just put it in here and let this just sit on the counter for an hour and let it marinate. But if you're, if you're in a hurry and you just want to make this, the, these seasonings have so much flavor that it'll just really taste good even if you season it and then air fry it right away. But if you let it sit overnight in the fridge or if you let it sit for an hour on the counter, it'll be even better. You're just going to want to set your air fryer to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And, they, and I'm going to cook this in two batches. If you have a bigger air fryer and you can fit all of them in, that's perfect. But mine will not fit and you want everything to go in there, not on top of each other. So it cooks evenly and you get that beautiful char and it cooks perfectly on both sides. My air fryer takes 12 minutes on each side. So I'm going to cook the chicken 12 minutes on one side. Flip it over, cook it 12 minutes more, and then it should be perfectly cooked, a little bit charred on top, and nice and juicy. Take it out and then put the next batch in and we repeat the same process, and then it's going to be ready to serve. So while the chicken is cooking in the air fryer, I went ahead and I made the sides. I'm serving the chicken shawarma today with some cauliflower rice, which is nice and healthy, a little bit of a chopped cucumber tomato salad, and my favorite sauce, the shawarma sauce. You can use tahini sauce if that is what you like. That is more traditional. We just love this sauce, so that is what I'm using today. For the cauliflower rice, I did get some help from the supermarket because I have made, 
I have tried making cauliflower rice with the cauliflower in the food processor, and it just doesn't turn out right. To me, it's too much work. It's affordable at the supermarket, and just makes life so much easy to open up a bag. It just has basic cauliflower in there, and if you buy them seasoned, it's even better. I like to buy this from, I think I get it from Aldi's. It's a garlic and herb cauliflower rice. All I do is I open up two bags, and I put them in a frying pan over medium-high heat. Once it starts to thaw out, then I like to add a little bit of butter. It's up to you how much butter you want to put in there. I like to put two or three tablespoons, maybe a little more, because it adds so much flavor. And I just season with a little pinch of salt. You could add some black pepper to this. You can saute some onions and put those in there. You can use this just the way you would a couscous and just flavor it any way you want. Once it thaws out and it's nice and steaming hot, it's pretty much ready. You can uh, cook it a little bit longer on the stove and it'll get nice and caramelized and super flavorful on the bottom. That is up to you. A simple side to make and it goes well with everything. For the salad, I, all I did was I chopped up a few cucumbers, some tomatoes, scallions. You want to make sure when you're chopping up scallions, you put them in a bowl of cold water so whatever dirt is trapped between them sinks down to the bottom and is not in your salad. Lift the scallions out and put them in a strainer and strain out all that excess water and then go ahead and add them to the salad. Then I had some mint. I just finely chopped some mint. You can use any herbs that you have on hand parsley, dill, basil, anything will work. Mint is nice and fresh. So I added that in there. And I have some white balsamic vinegar. It's a dressing that comes straight from Kriti and it's in my shop. It's delicious over any salad. It has a little bit of rosemary in it. It's, it's just so good. You guys should try it. Head on over to the website and grab a bottle and taste it for yourselves. And then I just drizzled some olive oil on top, a little bit of salt, mixed it all up salad is ready. The shawarma sauce couldn't be simpler, guys. It's just basically yogurt, a little bit of mayonnaise, some garlic, and a splash of lemon juice. You just mix everything all together, and the sauce is ready. This stays fresh in the refrigerator for days, and you can put it in sandwiches, over rice, really over everything. It tastes so good. I'm just waiting on the chicken to be ready. Then we're going to put it all together. Okay, so the chicken shawarma, the whole meal is ready. Once it comes out, you just want to let it rest a little bit. And then once it rests for about five, 10 minutes or so, then I just thinly slice it into strips. If you really want to give it the shawarma feel, a friend of mine on Instagram let me in on a little secret. If you happen to have a deli meat slicer, maybe refrigerate it for a little while so it's nice and firm and then pass it through there and then it'll taste like you got it from your favorite shawarma place. I serve mine with cauliflower rice, a, little, a few chicken shawarma strips on top. Then I like to put some salad on the side and I drizzle lots of the shawarma sauce on top of the chicken. It's gonna be delicious. You can put it in a pita pocket, in a wrap, over, serve it over rice with potatoes, with roasted vegetables. The options are endless. It's so good, you guys. Time for the taste test. Take a little bit of the cauliflower, a little bit of the chicken. Mmm. So much flavor, just delicious. Let's get some of that fresh salad. Mm -hmm. That vinegar really has the perfect kick. You can taste the rosemary in it. It's white balsamic vinegar, and if you've never tried it, you're gonna wanna give it a try. I really love the scallions in here rather than putting some red onions. The only thing missing are some pickles. If you have some pickled vegetables, definitely serve this together because shawarma and pickled vegetables just go together. They're meant to be. <laughs> anyway, the recipe for this with the step-by-step -step instructions and the exact measurements are on the blog, DemetriusDishes.com. Thank you guys so much for spending time with me today. If you want to learn the regular method of making shawarma in the oven, click over here and I'll see you right over there. Yes, us.